Today's book review is by James Wesley Rawls. He's the founder of survivalblog.com. He writes this book, How to Survive the End of the World as We Know It, Tactics, Techniques, and Technologies for Uncertain Times. Um, the general topic of this book is about preparation before a disaster strikes. It mostly covers items like securing your homestead, bugging in, long-term survival after a collapse of global economic proportions. It's not really a book that tells you how to bug out, how to live off the land, animal trapping, uh, general bushcraft, how to build a fire without matches. If that's the type of book you're looking for, this is not it. Um, the general audience of this book would be anybody who wants to uh, wants some information on preparation. A hardcore survivalist, you want to build a retreat out in the woods, how to stock it up, um, how to live off the grid, or long-term survival techniques, gardening, alternate power sources, etc. Um, as you see, the front of the book uh, just has the title. It also uh, reports that James Wesley Rawls is the founder of survivalblog.com. If you look up on survivalblog.com, you can see uh, that a lot of the information on there is contained in this book. On the back cover, it gives you a brief description of sort of um, uh, what would happen if a scenario, and it also gives you a list of uh, some of the information um, that's given inside the book. In terms of the content of the chapters, each topic or section covers roughly the same sort of structure. For example, uh, it talks about what something is, how to store it, how to protect it, how to obtain it. For example, uh, on any given topic, it sort of gives you a getting started, an overview. Then it talks about uh, options and materials needed. It goes over the disadvantages and advantages. For example, one method versus another. Uh, and then it covers sort of the methodologies. That's a portion um, of the book that sort of gives you a description of what to do after you've gathered all your materials and you've covered all the options and you've weighed out the advantages and disadvantages. And sort of the last portion of each chapter gives a security and safety portion. For example, um, in the alternative power and fuel section, the author talks about having a backup generator. And if you have power in your home and no one else in your neighborhood does, you might want to consider blacking out the windows um, so as not to attract too much attention because you may have a lot of unwanted guests who expect you to share your resources. I think the argument for this book, uh, it's a great title to come out in, uh, uh, it's kind of a niche market now because of these uncertain times. Uh, and the author, um, in some cases, uh, leaves you feeling that if you haven't been planning for at least the last decade, you're kind of behind the power curve and you need to play catch up. Um, one of the things I really liked was the fact that it covers a variety of topics. It gives you plenty of secondary resources offered even in areas that are weak on explanation. Number two, uh, it gives you a list of online books and resources um, that are on the author's survival blog website. That way, if there are any broken links, they can be updated by the author in the future if need be and the reader isn't left to solve these issues. I really like that. Number three, um, it gives you an example of what could happen. Uh, what types of disasters or long-term survival situations could occur, how unprepared people might react, how to build survival networks in your community, so it sort of gives you a mindset of why the topics in the book are important and sort of draws you in. And that was uh, something I really liked about the book because uh, it's one of those clinching reads where you don't really want to stop reading it. Okay, some of the things I didn't like about the book. Uh, number one, it was really lacking in photographs. Didn't have any charts, no animated descriptions where they might provide a quicker response to understanding a certain topic. For example, there's a lengthy text on uh, survival, childbirth, and labor. How to prep for that, what materials are needed, etc. But it's written in a long, lengthy chapter type text. There's no charts, there's no material list, there's no photos for quick reference. Um, also, there's a bit of inconsistency in the structure of the book because some topics have detailed descriptions and some don't. Number two, as I just mentioned, some topics are covered in more detail than others. Um, here's a good example of that. 
uh, there's um, on the chapter of food storage. Uh, they go into great detail, especially in the in-depth topics of how to store your own food um, long-term, including using food-grade containers, what constitutes a food-grade container, what materials are needed, and so forth. But then when you get to a topic like home canning, it doesn't really even define what home canning is. It just says, home canning is great. Here's some books you know, to go purchase to learn more about home canning. Well, that's good to have some resources, but as a reader, I kind of feel like, well, you should at least define this a little more so that I wouldn't have to go out and purchase or spend more money just to learn what this topic is all about. Number three, um, another thing that I didn't like about the book is it kind of leaves me feeling unfulfilled in some areas. Like I talked about before, there's some areas that you know go into greater description than others, so I'm left with this sort of unfulfilled unsatisfied feeling. Um, for example, another topic is urban survival. The Really the gist of the book, um, its premise is that you go out and purchase a survival retreat in the middle of nowhere and you stock it up. Um, however, if you live in a big city or an urban environment, it sort of gives an undertone of, well, you should move to the rural area and uh, have a retreat there. Uh, and that's great advice, but not everyone has the financial resources to accomplish this. So it sort of leaves me feeling unfulfilled in certain areas, and that's an example of how. How does this book fulfill the reader's needs? Okay, uh, well, for example, um, in my case, uh, it makes me become more aware of the many aspects that could happen during an economic collapse, things that you don't think about on a daily basis. I didn't really think about, um, you know, I mostly thought about myself and what I needed to prepare and what I needed for my family, but I didn't think about uh, having extra stuff available to give out to my neighbors or to build survival networks and so forth. So um, it fulfills my needs in giving me uh, uh, sort of a different perspective on things. It also fulfills my needs because uh, it gives me a list of lists. I really like this section. Um, because it just has uh, 20 or 30 lists of that you should have on your person uh, to be building upon. Uh, and it's very adaptable. So these are just things that the author suggests you may need during a global collapse. You can pick and choose based on your own specific needs. Another way it fulfilled my needs was this book really goes beyond the basics. It addresses issues of security, transportation, alternative power, uh, providing uh, needs for your community, your neighbors, just to name a few, and it includes a wealth of information uh, that's useful and resources that are available in addition to what's included in the book. Um, what I would suggest for supplemental resources to this book would be Cody Lundin's When All Hell Breaks Loose. That would be a comparable book to have in addition to this one or in lieu of this book. Uh, also, there's a good book written by Fernando Aguirre it's entitled Modern Survival Manual Surviving the Economic Collapse. And it's based on a real-world economic collapse that occurred in Argentina in 2001. That would be a nice addition to have uh, with this book. This book is currently available online. I just saw it today on Amazon.com for $6.99. For that price, an excellent value. How to Survive the End of the World as We Know It got four solid stars. It was a very enjoyable read, a lot of memorable uh, discussions inside the book. Uh, it provides some convincing arguments, yet still room for some improvement. I recommend this book. Check it out. Thanks for watching The Survival Bookshelf. Stay tuned for more.